Good morning, great pleasure to be here. Always great to come back to Brussels. Um, so, wow, the lights are pretty intense. So I can't see you. That's, I guess that's an advantage or a disadvantage, depending on how you look at it. Uh, I live in Switzerland, uh, a neutral country, and uh, I'm a futurist. So I talk about future trends, and I'm trying to share with you a couple of things. I'm not going to give you predictions. You know, that's what fortune cookies are for. Uh, as was said earlier, I think the best way to predict the future is to invent it, as Alan Kay has said, and I, I hope that you guys can invent the future today. One of the things that I will mention, I think what's happening is that traditional television as we know it is kind of getting dark in the sense of what it does. You know, we're moving to a new definition of television, and the great thing about television is that it's converging with the internet. Unlike the music business, which has been trying to diverge from the internet, I think television industry and the public service industry for television is already moving in this direction. I think what we need to face is when disruption is ubiquitous, which it is every day now, transformation becomes everyone's job. So uh, I would uh, propose to you to use the Google paradigm, 10% of your time spent on transformation. Think about that for a second. If you spend 10% of your time thinking about the future and transforming, how would that change your reality apart from being completely overloaded with work, of course? You'd have to figure out what to do about this. I think what we're seeing here is that this cause of disruption, we're seeing the old order, the way things used to be, and then there's a new order. And very often this new order is associated with piracy, with illegal activities. You know, remember that YouTube, the biggest broadcaster in the world, basically, was illegal, or more or less illegal, and still is in many countries, not entirely legal. Right? And all the stuff that came from YouTube has really changed the world. And most disruptive innovation does not come from the current players. Who invented the self-driving car? Not Audi or BMW or Volvo. Google. Is Google planning to be a comp car company? No. They're looking to disrupt and move things forward. So that's what we have to watch out for. It will come from the outside all the key changes. A couple examples. In the book business, it's easily possible to scan every single book, and bookmates.ru have done this. It's, uh, it's available for you to download any book you want. I think something like 50 million, if you speak Russian, you can do that. And why has the book industry evolved from this rather than you know, the music industry, which has not evolved from this? Because clearly there's a better offer. Right? Here the transformation, in this case, was the Kindle. There's more Kindle books, electronic books being sold than printed books. Transformation here was key because why would people buy a book for real money? The Kindle books are not much cheaper than the print books. The answer is you have to be better than just free. The Kindle is better than free. And when the Kindle price drops to two dollars a book, why would you ever try to download it for free without paying the authors? So better than free is possible. It's not a mission impossible, uh, as had always been said about the music or the film industry. And as Jeff Bezos says, the CEO of Amazon, he is all about proactively delighting customers. This could be a first thing on your table this morning. How can you proactively delight your viewers? Use the Amazon paradigm. That's all he cares about, the innovation that comes from this. Now television, Google research says, the television no longer commands a full attention. People are doing other things, and the stats show that, for example, people are more and more fragmented, so less and less people watching the same show worldwide. That's kind of true, I think. So transformation is to use that social medium along with television. As I'm sure you talked about in the last few days, social TV, you've seen the Grace Note app, I think, already, and the fact that people are using second screen devices. This is a lifesaver for television, clearly converge those two things. So learning from this is follow the convergence. Media is converging, offline, online is converging, industries are converging, follow the convergence. Third point, telecom. You've seen this chart here maybe? OTT is called over the top. People are using mobile broadband to make phone calls on Viber and WhatsApp. Many of you I'm sure have this. <laughs> So what is happening? The telcos are providing internet connectivity, and in return, we stop using them. We stop using SMS. This is a cash cow of $375 million every single day worldwide, and we're going to stop using it. 
So what are the telcos doing about this? They're bundling it. Telia is bundling music, uh, Spotify in this, uh, in this uh, case, Reliance in India is bundling that, those kind of services into the bundle, and Telcom Indonesia, one of my clients, is uh, going out to empower the customer. They're going with what is inevitable anyway. So learning from this is, we have to leave the silos behind. Telcos are no longer in the business of providing phone calls or data, they're in the business of lifestyle. They're a platform providing services and added values. Think of yourself in the same way. You're not a broadcaster, not just a broadcaster. You're providing a lot more than that, and there's a lot more to it. The cable industry. We've seen disruption there. You see on this chart in America, is the cable industry is selling less and less of TV bundles, you know, cable television bundles, and more and more internet access. So lucky for them, they're actually in both businesses. You know, they have television programs and internet access, and transforming essentially by creating bundles. So another good example for this basically is that taking leaps is a requirement. You have to go out and do something that you haven't done before. And I think this is fundamental. You know, I'm originally from Germany, and, and still I would uh, say to you that it's probably better that we're looking at speed over perfection. It's a very un-German thing to say. But we have to take a leap. It's a requirement. We cannot just go and say, let's avoid risk at all costs, because if we do that, we have risk. Very big problem. Advertising. You've seen the shift, and this is the uh, latest stats from America on the right-hand side. All of the big brands are, trying to, are going to get out of newspaper advertising and consumer magazines, radio, trade, and television. On the left is what they're going to do in the future, mobile, social media, marketing automation, and so on and so on. So what are newspapers and publishers doing about this? Well, they're discovering in this transformation that they have more to offer. Added values like these, in this chart you can see relevance, filtering, community, reputation, and so on. This is very, very important to publishers to discover. A great example is The Economist, which is allowing me to listen to the magazine an audio version. So when I'm driving my car, I can listen to The Economist. That's why I subscribe. So the answer of The Economist is not to say, you know, you should pay us, but their answer is, we'll provide more value and you will pay us. And there's quite a difference. Pay will, pay wall. I think it's going to be about pay will. Learning from this is, even the biggest empires, not to say that you guys are empires, would eventually time out. Empires become networks, and if you become a network, I think you can create a new empire out of this. Doctors. Three months ago, I did a seminar for doctors. And guess what? You know, doctors are worried about the internet because it's empowerment of the patient. So they're, they're squeezed between the electronic devices and the, and the patients with iPads coming in and say, you know, I, I read this, you know, can you do it differently? And what do they do? Well, they use technology. They're going to use the Watson computer to have access to a huge da database. They're going to use iPads and, of course, medical robots. Sounds like science fiction? Already here. Learning from this, reduce control, rely on trust, and add value. At this point, I think we've seen and aptly demonstrated in very other industries that increasing control by the customer gets more control and the user is mission impossible. I'll show you some more examples in that shortly. So the other learning I think that we can take from this is that the future is not a zero-sum game. Just because people are on Facebook or looking at social media or YouTube doesn't mean they're going to like you less. It doesn't mean they're going to ignore television just because they have Facebook. There's a bridge between the two. I think this idea of a zero-sum pie we have to put away. This pie is growing, and it's going to be available to all of us. I worked in the music business for a long time. Many of you may know my book, The Future of Music, 2005. Whatever you're going to do, don't mirror the music business. This is the easiest, you know, anti-paradigm. I know this intimately because I've worked with them for 15 years, and I recently stopped doing it for obvious reasons. Okay, this is what they do, right? They try to lock up with copy protection. They complain about people not paying. They try to pass legislation to protect their business model. They're talking about piracy. And they're talking about Hadopi 
in France passing laws that prevent this. They're killing innovation with bad licensing rules like Spotify. Basically, the music business has made mission impossible out of digital media. What they should do is accept that everything is moving into the cloud and that people are using cloud computing, change usage rights, come up with standards for this, become indispensable and be liked. Did you know that last year, two years ago, the music companies were the most hated companies in the world right after the guys that make the bombs for Iraq, Halliburton. That's quite an achievement for an industry. So whatever you do, don't do that. Okay. Because in the end, it's all about this. As a public broadcaster, as a public media, it's about trust and relevance and what is called likeonomics. It's a great book with that title, you should read. It's about being liked and being relevant. It's the same thing. People that don't like you won't find you relevant. I love Arte. Anybody from Arte here? Arte, the television? Okay, yes. I love Arte and I love that. And this is why I'm happy to pay my taxes. Because I like them and I see the value. So trust, social capital, and I think the license to operate in the future will not be the political license to get your public broadcasting funds. It'll be purely based on a license to operate, a social license to operate. If you see, for example, on the left, the music business. Recorded music declining, half of the American kids saying they spend zero dollars on music. How is that possible when you see transformation like this? Netflix, you guys know Netflix, I'm sure. 42 million subscribers paying $10. What in the world is wrong with the music people? If 42 million people are paying $10, what's wrong with these guys? Transformation. So learning from this is, Embrace what customers, consumers, users, viewers actually want. And don't re-educate three billion people on their media behavior. Embrace what they actually want. It's not rocket science. Ask your kids, they know. The app economy. So all of you guys have mobile phones. You see what's happening here? Is that the mobile app economy is exploding. More and more people are using mobile apps. And over here, app stores are exploding. Apple makes more money selling apps and selling music. Why in the world are we paying $2 for a divorce app or something, which exists actually, there's a hundred of them, uh, if we're not going to pay a dollar for music? Right? Because we see value. The app economy offers some great learnings. So I want to finalize and say, yes, I think it is possible for public broadcasters to transform into the digital age by using this very simple paradigm to start a new order in parallel to the old order. Thanks very much for your time. You can download my slides at futurewithgert.com or my Dropbox site, which is gertcloud.com. Thanks very much.